Here we go. Cora's going to help. Start putting some money in there. Ready? How about one at a time? Okay, goes right there. 25. 20, this one's going to be harder. 26 <laughs> plus 5 is 30. And then 42. 26 again. 51. 48, <laughs> all right, I think that was 49, it's 50, 50, let's sing happy birthday to Jan, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jen, happy birthday to you. Wonderful. Any other celebrations this week or bir anniversaries, birthdays? All right, let's talk about prayer requests. What do we have for prayer requests this week? We will continue to pray for Israel and Palestine as the conflict continues there. You might notice today that Leif and his family aren't here. That's because Lila has her first gymnastics competition today. So we're going to pray for Lila today as she gets to enjoy gymnastics, and we'll pray for that to be a great experience for her. And I, um, if you remember next week to ask her how that went, that would be great. Um, and then... We also know from the email that was sent out earlier this week that Eric passed away on Monday. His family is with us here today. So we will continue to pray for Eric and his family in midst of grief um, and the promises of Christ that come to us during this time. Um, we're so sorry for your loss, and we're here with you. And we've been praying with you for months, and we will continue to pray for you during this time of grief. The funeral is set to be on the 22nd at 2 o'clock. And I'm looking for some volunteers to help with the reception piece of it. We're going to do just a simple desserts, sweet breads, coffee kind of thing. So if you're able on the 22nd to come help me with that, please let me know after worship so we can get that all coordinated. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we're so happy that uh, we'll get to celebrate Eric's life with you all in this place that meant so much. And if you didn't know, Eric met his wife, Julia, who's here with us today, right here at Lord of Life on an Easter morning. And so this is a special place for the whole family, and we're just so happy that we get to walk with you during this time. Any other prayers for today? All right. With that, we will prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Um, with our musical offering.
please rise as you are able for our call to worship today. Our God can part the sea. Our God can walk on water. Our God sets the stars in the sky. There is nothing our God cannot do. If you spend any time with a child, you will quickly notice that children see the world differently. For a child, a ladybug is a miracle. A pine tree is a wonder. Curiosity is a love language. And water is not only for survival, but for joy. As adults, we forget this language of awe and wonder. And when we do, we distance ourselves from God. In confession, we have the opportunity to close that distance. So let us return to God with our hearts wide open. Let us return to God in prayer. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, somewhere in our childhood, we face pressure to outgrow awe. We turn into adults who obsess over data and facts. We praise those who have answers. We assume that wonder is an answerless game. Forgive us for closing that door to you. Remind us that the kingdom of God belongs to children. Teach us the ways of awe and wonder, so that like Zechariah, when we find ourselves speechless, our first words will be words of praise. Hearts wide open, we pray. Family of faith, just as we marvel at mountains and newborns, at sunrises and sunsets, God marvels at us. There is nothing you can do or leave undone that could prevent God from loving you. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. We are forgiven. We are loved. We belong to God. Amen. We join together in singing, God is here.
Please pray with me the prayer of the day. God of the universe, open our hearts. Open our eyes as if for the first time so that we might see your world with awe and wonder once again. Lead us to be in awe of what you are doing in this world. Help us to not have our hearts and minds clouded by the distractions of this world. For just a moment, help us to pause to make room for wonder. Help us to greet this text with awe and gratitude. For we are confident that in doing so, we will learn more about you. Amen. You may be seated. I invite any children who'd like to come up to come up to our Advent wreath for the lighting. Come on up so you can see better. We had to move the Advent wreath over here because we had so many hats and scarves and gloves donated. We needed a whole second tree. Come on over here so you can see this Advent wreath. And we're going to light this candle and this candle and the pink one today. And you can just go, they're a little bit tricky today, so you can just go ahead and start lighting them as we talk about this together. So, um, how does a weary world practice joy? By dancing and throwing birthday parties. By hanging Christmas lights and holding sleeping babies by singing loudly and looking for good news. There are a million ways to practice joy, so today we light the candle of joy as a reminder and a charge. Got it. Amen. Thank you. All right, come on over here, kids. So, I'm going to have you stay. We have some things to do here. Let's see. I've got some stuff for our children's message today. Can you guys tell me what's in my hands? What's this? Are you sure? Are you? Okay, it is. It's water. Um, so, I have a pitcher of water. What color is it? Clear. Clear. Okay. I'm not a magician, but I feel like one a little bit right now. What are these? Cups. Cups? Who wants one? Yeah, great. Good. I needed some volunteers. That one's for you. That one's for you. Cora gets one. Anybody else want a cup? Yeah, great. Great. Oh, wonderful. No, I think you just have one. Here you go. And here's one for you. Wonderful. Anybody else want, want a cup? Anyone, anyone else? I feel like Charmaine wants one, but yeah, come on up, Charmaine. <laughs> Charmaine can have a cup. Here you go. Is there a football game happening today? What, what, what time is that game happening today? 49ers and Seahawks. You even know who they're playing. That's impressive. Who, who are they? What time? Oh, we've got time then. Wonderful. Okay. And what is this in my hand? Anybody know? What do you use food coloring for? Coloring food. What else do you use it for? What else do you use it for? Oh, it's for frosting. Yep, we use it for frosting in my house. Anything else you use food coloring for? To color water? Why would we do that? Yeah. Well, we're going um, to talk about a miracle here today. And that miracle is going to be me dealing with food coloring and a white robe. <laughs> and we will see what happens. Really living on the edge today. So, I want to talk about science. Who, is, do, who has science in school? How do you feel about science? You like it? Yeah? You like it, like it, science is pretty good. Is science more fun or less fun than PE? More? Wow, as a former PE teacher, I would, might agree with that too. Okay. So, what do you expect to happen if I put this blue food coloring in this water? You think it'll turn blue? Or maybe it won't. We don't, we don't know until we do it, right? It's not, it's plain water. 
plain water. Okay, I need one volunteer with their cup to come on up here. Come on up. Okay. Blue food coloring. Cup. Don't spill this, okay? All right, and then blue water, or water, and we think it'll turn? It's blue. Can you hold it up for people to see? Ooh, it's really blue. That's awesome. Okay, I need one more volunteer. Okay, come on up. What color is this? Red. Red. I think it might be yellow. Okay. Okay, well, here we go. What do we got? It's kind of an orangish yellow color. Okay, sit down, hold that carefully. What do we got here? What's the, what color is this? Red. Red? Damien, do you want to help me with this one? You do? Okay, great. Here we go. What color do you think this will be? I think it might be red. Red, okay. <gasps> show on, turn around and show them. All right, if you are currently holding a cup with water, will you please come right over here and put it on the ground in front of me, right here? Perfect. Yep, yep. This is exactly, that's what we would expect to happen. Okay, who has a cup left? Cup, cup, cup. If you have a cup left, come up and see me. Come up and see me. Yep, Charmaine, come on up. <laughs> what color did this make? Red. Red, okay, now I'm gonna put some color in your cup and everyone stay here, okay? Don't go anywhere, okay? How many drops did I put in? How many drops did I put in? How many drops did I put in? How many drops? Five. <laughs> All right. And what color did this make? Red. This one was the yellow one. Don't go anywhere. No. <laughs> All right. And now what was this one? Okay, here we go. Oh, I got some on you. Don't get that on your jersey. Okay, when I pour water into your cup, what color do you think it's going to make? Brown. Brown? Brown? Brown. Brown. Let's find out. Everyone, I'm going to put water in. Stay facing me, then we'll turn around and show everyone at the same time, okay? You ready? Keep facing me. Hold on tight. Two hands, maybe. Perfect. Ooh. That's just water. It's okay. <gasps> Here you go, Cora. All right. What color did you end up with? It's a really dark one. This one is going to be a purplish. Oh, look at this. I'm going to get this on my robe for sure. <laughs> Um, and, oh, Coral, show them yours. It's pinkish. Okay, now everyone can go put your cups down over there in that collection. So, the whole time that we were putting, good job, everybody, really impressed with the not spilling. I wasn't at all concerned. So, the whole time that we were putting water in there, we didn't know what would happen until we actually put the water in, right? Like, we had questions about how much water would go in and what color that would be. It's not going to spill on the clothes, unless you're planning on going over there and, like, kicking it over. I think it'll be okay. Um, so, something that happens when we look at science is it makes us ask questions, like, why does that happen? Or what will happen when I do this? And when we ask those questions, we learn more about God. As God says, when you do this, this is what happens. This is what I've created. And we can do something called awe, where we are surprised by it and delighted. And that's a big word that we'll learn more about in a little bit. Awe, shall, spelt short, but hard to explain. And you all will learn more about it in Sunday school. So I'm going to send you off to Sunday school to ask questions and explore and study this text. So off you go.
Let's do it. Oh my gosh, look at this delivery. I loved that. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you. And we will continue with our scripture for the day. The reading for today is from Psalm 126. Our scripture, I will read the yellow text, and you are invited to respond with the white. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the Lord forces of the wicked. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. My goodness, this day, okay. Here we go. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Now the, ta the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard the Lord had shown his great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives, our name, relatives has this name. When they began motioning to his father to find out what, he, what name he wanted to give him, he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Several weeks ago, months now, I started looking at our theme for Advent and what we would be studying. And when I did that and I found this, uh, um, this liturgy by Sanctified Art and I started looking at the scriptures for the days and the themes for the days, here's what happened. I looked at how does a weary world rejoice? And our first one was we rejoice by acknowledging that weariness exists. And I thought... That might be interesting to preach on, might be a little tricky, but um, I, I feel pretty solid about preaching on that one. And then the next week was about Mary going to Elizabeth, right? And what happened when Mary went to Elizabeth? Does anyone remember how a weary world rejoices, what that theme of that day was? Mary goes to Elizabeth, and because of connection, a weary world rejoiced. Okay. And when I looked at that theme, I thought... I, I'm really excited to dive into that one a little bit more and preach on it. That will take a little bit of work to study this Mary and Elizabeth connection that we don't often preach on. And then as I was looking through, I saw this one, and I went, oh, this theme today is awe. How does a weary world rejoice? Awe? Fantastic. That'll be easy. It has not been easy. Because the temptation in this situation is for me to come to you on a Sunday morning and say... Awe is everywhere. Go and find it. Enjoy the Seahawks game. 
That's the temptation of the day, is that we could take awe and we could make it the silver lining of every bad event. And we could take weariness and awe and put them side by side and say, well, just look. Just look for awe and it will appear. And I didn't want to do that in this sermon. I didn't want to send you away with some sort of, I don't know, simple approach to something much more complex. So I started doing text study. I started with my friends here in the Senate, and then I called my friends in Montana, and then I talked to my friend Sean in Alaska, who is a pastor, and all of us were like, this is harder than we expected it to be. Because when we started looking deeper at the word awe, do you know what we found in Scripture about the word awe? Does anyone know what other emotion goes along with that? Fear. Exactly. There are very few places in Scripture where the word awe is not accompanied with the word fear or even replaced by it. Awe often has trembling involved. So scared you have a physical response to it. Well, what are we supposed to do with that? How are we supposed to use awe to rejoice in the midst of a weary world when awe has to do with fear? What is it that the angels say any time they come to someone? Do not fear. Do not fear. I am just a, something you weren't expecting speaking to you directly from God. Don't be afraid. You've never seen this before. Do not be afraid. Every time these instances of close, close interaction with God happen, we have to remember to not be afraid because God is so much bigger than we can comprehend. God is so much bigger that we can't constantly be in awe of God because it would be too much for us. There's a reason we're not in awe all the time. It would be too much. So God gives us glimpses of how big God is so that, that we're not overwhelmed, so that while we are afraid, we do not have to become completely terrified. And God comes to us. So now, I want to tell you about Monday's sermon. In Monday's sermon, when I was preparing this, I was going to tell you all about how God is so big and awe is such a big emotion that it is reserved for huge things and only huge things. That awe does not appear in our daily lives because it is reserved for the big moments. That was Monday's sermon. I've learned some things, <laughs> and I've, I've learned more about everyday awe and what that means for our lives. And fortunately for me, there are people who study awe. So I'm going to get notes out now because I want to give credit to the people who do this work. There is a man, Dr. Dasher Keltner, who's a psychologist at the University of California in Berkeley, and his job is to study awe. What a great job that is. So he's studying awe, and he's learned some things about it over the course of time. Something he's learned about awe is that not only in the Bible is it accompanied by fear, but in our everyday lives, one quarter of our experiences with awe come with a threat of danger. One quarter of our experiences of awe come with that. So we're seeing it biblically, we're also seeing it here today. Coming face to face with a grizzly bear was one of the most awe-experiencing moments of my life. And I also thought I was gonna die. I'll tell you that story later, it's very good. But a quarter of our experiences have to do with some sort of threat happening. Awe was not originally put in to the list of emotions that we feel. 
It's been lumped in with happiness and joy, but it hasn't been studied on its own until much more recently in human history. So here are some things that Dr. Keltner has figured out over time. It's different from other emotions, so we can't lump it in, because even our facial expressions, our reactions are different than those other emotions, which means we can't just say it's the same as something else, because we physically react differently within our faces. Not only that, but awe has been shown to regulate your body functions. It slows the heart rate. It helps you control your breathing. It even can help with your digestion, being in awe. I was a little bit in awe of that, if we're being honest. Who knew? And all of these benefits of awe came from minor moments of awe. God made us to benefit from minor moments of awe. And not just mentally, but physically, we are changed by awe. We are changed by witnessing the presence of God and acknowledging it. And imagine what it does for a community when together we experience awe. If it's doing it just for one person, imagine what that does for the body of Christ. Beyond that, awe has the ability to affect how we view ourselves. So often when we are in awe of things, it's because it's connecting us to the world in a much bigger way. We're seeing how things are affected by something else, both good and bad. And when we see that domino of effects for good, it brings to us this feeling of awe. And then we see how we're part of that. So our world that struggles so deeply with feelings of insecurity and shame and that you are not enough and you do not matter, when we see how big our God is and how big the world is and that we are part of that, it helps us. It helps us to know that we are valuable in the midst of it. So Dr. Kittler has given us four things that we can practice to become more in tune to awe. One thing we can do is we can start paying attention more. And this starts at a root problem of the fact that we are so often distracted by so many things in our lives. Our heads are down, buried a lot in electronics, in distractions, in just general wanting to escape from things around us. And we can pay attention more. We can make a conscious effort to look for things that bring us awe. The other thing he says is that we can look for the good in others. It is so easy to look for the not good in others. But we actually get feelings of awe when we look for the good. We can practice mindfulness, which is close to that paying attention, close to that looking for good in others. Where are our thoughts going? How much time are we spending paying attention to that? We can practice those mindfulness skills. And he says that we can do new things. Open yourself up to new experiences so that awe can come in in a new way. He found that when you have experiences of awe with other people, that it forms a stronger bond and trust and even love in between those two people. Which means that when we experience those moments of awe, we also form a bond and trust and deeper love with God as we understand more about God. How does a weary world rejoice? We look for awe, which is present in the midst of weariness. And we think about the ways that it changes us to go out into a world that's weary. Because when we take that all with us, more of the world will be changed by it. Amen.
please rise as you are able as we sing Prepare the Royal Highway. Joined together, we pray for God's creation and this community, responding to God, we are in constant call, constant, oh my goodness, we're going to do an affirmation of faith first, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm glad I looked up. Okay. <sighs> we believe in a God who knows our names. We believe that God's fingerprints are all over creation. And that God is forever speaking to us in millions of different ways. We believe that awe and wonder, these songs of laughter, telling stories of great invention, are all ways that we can say thank you to our creating, sustaining, and loving God. Therefore, we commit ourselves to We commit ourselves to living lives of awe, wonder, and gratitude. We believe. Thanks be to God. Now we join together in prayer. Responding to God, we are in constant awe of you with, and we give you thanks and praise. And we give you thanks. And it'll be... Okay, great. Holy God, Christ with us, once again we bow our heads. Once again we close our eyes. Once again we draw ourselves closer to you in prayer. Meet us here. Surround us with your loving presence. From sunrise to sunset, you fill us with awe. For that, we pause to give you gratitude. Thank you for the way the sun shines through our windows, for the mist rising off the river, for the warmth of a cup of coffee, for the joy of returning home, for the beauty of a crowded table, and for the glory of a sky full of stars. God, we are in constant awe of you. The story of Zechariah and Elizabeth reminds us that there is nothing we cannot do and there is no grief that you do not know. We ask that you hold the family of Eric as they grieve during this season. 
and we thank you for the promises that you have him safely now. God, we are in constant awe of you. We know that the good news of God goes hand in hand with many in this world who cannot find the energy to practice awe or wonder because they are so deep in grief. We know that you never leave our side no matter what we are going through. God, we are in constant awe of you. Be with every parent who worries about a sick child. Be with every child who worries about a sick parent. Be with every person waiting on the doctor's phone call, waiting for next month's paycheck, waiting for the next warm meal. Holy God, surround those with broken hearts who are trying to stitch the pieces back together, praying that one day they might be able to feel awe again. We pray especially for Israel and Palestine that they will soon feel the awe of peace. All the while, we keep gathering together and turning to you to remind us that you are the God of the impossible. You are the one who floods our world with awe. You are the one who knows our names. God, we are in constant awe of you. We pray all of these things to you, knowing that you hold these words and the ones that are left on our hearts unspoken with you, trusting that you hear them. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
good and gracious God, we thank you for these gifts that you have first given us, that we return them now to you with grateful and thankful hearts, trusting in your ministry to the world to share the gospel of the good news with all in need. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to God, who comes to us in new and unexpected ways, delivering moments of awe. God uses ordinary moments and ordinary people to show us how close God is to us at any time. One of the ways that God does this is that in the night before he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gather together, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For communion today, everyone is invited forward to receive communion. You'll come forward and kneel or stand at the railing as you feel comfortable or as the flowers allow. And you'll receive first the bread, which is gluten-free, followed by the wine or grape juice. Grape juice is along the outside of the tray. Wine is in the center. It is all the same color. Grape juice around the outside, wine in the center. We also have prepackaged elements if you prefer that. Those are not gluten-free. If you would like to receive a, bloke, a, a spoken blessing as well as communion today, please just let me know when you come up, and I'd be happy to provide a spoken blessing as well. Everything is ready, and everyone is welcome. Please come.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you today and every day. Amen. We have a couple of announcements this week. We have the preschool Sunday school, Sunday, or the preschool program is happening tomorrow evening. So if you said you would bring cookies, they can go into the um, fridge in the back and we'll get those plated. If you said you would bring cookies, you haven't brought them yet, just bring them by tomorrow, tomorrow morning sometime so we can get those ready to go. I think that we have enough, so I think we're all set. So thank you for everyone who brought cookies or has committed to bringing cookies um, for that. There will be probably over 100 people here tomorrow night to hear the story of Jesus told by the preschoolers. So we will look forward to that. And I also happen to know that Damien has a line and that he's very good at it. So I have heard it. It's wonderful. Uh, so we're excited to have all of those people here at church with us. Um, Wednesday night, we'll have worship for the weary. So this is a chance for people who are feeling particularly weary the season to come and have a little bit of time of quiet and reflection and prayer. The service will mostly be focused around prayer with a little bit of singing. And if you are not feeling particularly burdened this year, this is a great opportunity to come and be with people and connect and help them to carry their weariness. So I invite all people to come and pray um, whether you're feeling particularly weary or not. That's Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Next week, the 17th, we will be moving a little bit away from what we've been doing with this theme because we're going to do a theme of Run to the Manger, and we'll hear the stories of people who have heard the birth of Christ proclaimed and the Christmas carols that go along with that proclamation. And then on Christmas Eve, we will only have one service that Sunday at 5 o'clock. That'll be our Christmas Eve service. And that theme will be around uh, Stand in Awe at the Manger. So next Sunday, we're going to rejoice and run to the manger. And then on Christmas Eve, we will stand in awe of what God has done there. And so be prepared for that. And if you really like Christmas carols, make sure you're here both weeks so you get to sing a lot of them. Um, did I have anything else? Okay. Uh, once again, if you are able to help with the reception for Eric's funeral on the 22nd, come see me after church. And... That is all I have. Does anyone else have announcements for the good of the group today? Okay. Please stand as you are able for our benediction and then our closing hymn. As you leave this place, you go into a weary world. So speak tenderly. Do that good that is yours to do. Choose connection. Hold on to hope. Remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved, so go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen.
Go in peace. God is with you. Praise be to God. Where are your folks today? Thank you.